Okay, so hi everyone. Thank you for making it. Uh, I'm David. I'm the project lead on the CryptPad team, uh, part of XWiki. And so today I'm going to give you a little summary of what CryptPad is and what we're looking at uh, for the year ahead. Uh, but first, I want to give a little bit of context. Uh, what context are we working in? I think we're in a, a, a peculiar moment when it comes to online collaboration. Uh, I'm going to take education as an example, but I think the broad strokes of what's happening is applying to many other sectors. Uh, so last May, Human Rights Watch released a report where they found that 90% of um, education tech software was spying on students or had the potential to spy on students. And of course, a lot of this is uh, linked to the COVID crisis. Um, so don't get me wrong, this, is not, this didn't just spring out of nowhere when COVID happened. It, a lot of it was kind of waiting in the wings. Um, but studies such as this one on the zoomification of universities really show uh, the kind of um, drastic shifts in adoption uh, in terms of online collaborative software that happened around COVID and also highlights uh, real concerns uh, in this case about the impact on academic freedom that um, concerns that are raised when universities become reliant on um, cloud providers especially like big tech cloud providers I personally know a lot of people in, in academia and, and basically since COVID, uh, a lot of people just live in Microsoft Teams now. Um, so that's an issue. I'm not, I'm not going to go too deep into it, but um, yeah, Privacy International is, is watching this space and, and especially in the ed tech sector, I think this is really worth uh, watching. So. At the moment, we're at this point where um, big um, entities such as governments, so in France, for example, where we're based, um, the, the education ministry is as its back against the wall in a way because they're, they're forced to, you know, they can't keep recommending that people flock to big tech uh, in the kind of early panic of COVID. Um, and so they're, they're not, they're, they're, advising against it, uh, but I guess the big question is, uh, what now? You know, where, where do you go now? What, how do you replace uh, these tools? Uh, where collaboration has, has proven to be, there, there's, there's a need for uh, some kind of collaborative software solution, but obviously all the concerns linked with these solutions being provided by uh, big tech giants are really becoming apparent and, and harder to ignore now that these um, situations are kind of normalized. And the issue is that collaboration often comes at the price of privacy, right? So you have these, um, on one side, these solutions that are very good at providing collaboration. Uh, some of them are, uh, you know, big evil tech corps like we've seen. Some others are um, maybe less evil, maybe more open source, etc. But um, yeah, typically not uh, very good at privacy. On the other hand, you have uh, very good solutions that um, provide encrypted um, storage and personal note taking, for example, but that are typically not great at collaborative work. Okay, and so um, at CryptPad, we think, or the, the, our project exists because we think you should be able to have both. Um, so the collaboration and privacy shouldn't be uh, mutually exclusive, basically. So we exist in that overlap uh, in the Venn diagram. And so what we provide uh, is basically uh, an online collaborative office suite with a lot of features that you'd come to expect from such a thing. So we, you have a drive where you can store uh, documents we have a full suite of applications, all of which are uh, collaborative in real time. So that means uh, different people can be editing the same document at the same time and see each other's cursors and things like this. So we have spreadsheets, text documents, forms, Kanban boards, 
uh, plain text markdown documents. Um, so some of these are integrations of other uh, open source software. So we integrate uh, only Office front end, uh, for example, uh, and others are um, uh, made from scratch. So, uh, for example, our forms application uh, we developed um, from the ground up. We have um, a lot of collaborative uh, features. So some of the, uh, the drive that I showed, this could also be a team drive where a few people have access to the same set of folders and we have granular kind of access controls as to who can see what, etc. Uh, we have calendars, uh, sharing um, capabilities. So with contacts on the platform, but also with the ability to produce links that you can then share to your friends so you can all uh, edit the same set of notes, for example. Um, and the, the real unique feature behind all of this is that everything is end-to-end -end encrypted. So um, basically, everything happens in your browser. And your browser encrypts and decrypts um, all the messages that you send to the server that's centralizing the, the collaborative element. Okay, So nothing leaves your device unencrypted is the basic um, uh, kind of feature, but also constraint that we have. Um, OK, so I'm going to um, do a little tour of what's uh, kind of currently on our minds. I have to put in a, a disclaimer that um, a lot is in flux at the moment. Uh, we're in the, in the process of setting up potentially big partnerships and stuff, but nothing is kind of fully finalized. So I'm not going to give any names, and I'm not going to promise that everything I'm going to show today is going to actually be implemented this year. And maybe some other stuff that I have no idea about yet will be implemented instead. So just, this is just what's currently on our mind as of February 2023. So one thing that's definitely underway is uh, a project called CryptPad Blueprints where we're thoroughly documenting uh, the use of cryptography as we currently um, use it so that it's uh, more transparent, uh, our threat model is open, etc. Uh, and so that we can also pave the way for future developments. Uh, so uh, Theo, who's sitting here in the front row, is, is leading this effort. Uh, he's just given a talk in the security dev room if you want to catch up on that later on. Uh, and he's also just released a white paper as the first step in this project. Um, there are some interesting experiments in the, in the kind of looking ahead uh, part of this project that are coming up. Uh, we're going to experiment with CRDTs. So we're, we're testing like a very experimental prototype with uh, using YJS as a way of syncing um, the edits between different users. Uh, and we're also um, looking into how we could implement perfect for its secrecy. At the moment, when you join a document, you also gain access to its history, which in some cases could be problematic. So we want to have a way of limiting the access to the history to the moment that you join, for example. Um, and we want to have also better ways of uh, recovering uh, your accounts. At the moment, the, the typical support email that we get is, I forgot my password. And we can't do anything uh, in that case, unfortunately, because uh, otherwise we would have access to um, people's documents. Uh, but there are ways of, of doing this uh, in a slightly better way uh, when it comes to usability. Uh, so we want to look at this. Uh, this is funded by uh, Next Generation Internet, by the way, uh, who also have a presence here. So I encourage you to, to, to look them up. Another project we're doing uh, with the help of their funding at the moment is CryptPad Auth. So this is also uh, secured. Uh, we are looking at different ways of improving authentication on CryptPad. So we're going to look at uh, ways to speak, to integrate with existing single sign-on scheme. Uh, so say if, if a company already has a single sign-on system, then CryptPad should uh, be able to uh, be part of that and also looking at multi-factor authentication. Now, this time last year, I was presenting the results uh, here at FOSDEM of our inter-office uh, project. 
This is um, a project where we, we basically developed a document conversion between different office formats. And because of the constraints I was speaking earlier, um, this cannot happen on the server because our server doesn't know anything. So it had to happen in the client and that was slightly complicated. Uh, but we did it and uh, with this we were able to um, complete our integration of the only office editors. So we also released um, the presentation and text document editors at the time. However, we're still having uh, quite a few issues with them. We've not been able to stabilize them as much as we'd like, so we're still seeing some bugs and we're not quite able to reproduce them. So a big priority for us this year will be to, um, to stabilize these two apps. At the moment, on our flagship instance, Crypa.fr, they're limited to paying users just simply because we needed a way of limiting the amount of support tickets we were going to get. Um, so one of the big goals this year is to st stabilize these two apps and um, release them for everyone. Mind you, the, I mean, they are still open source, right? So if you're self-hosting an instance, you already have access to these. Another thing we're looking at is to integrate a new application uh, so draw.io or diagrams.net, uh, that editor should make its way into Cryptpad uh, this year. So collaborative diagram editing uh, is very exciting. We just heard about uh, the relentless march of Markdown. And one thing that um, we're looking at as well is to improve uh, Markdown use in Cryptpad. Well, to improve... We already have great support for Markdown. We have two applications, so our code editor has um, great Markdown support with lots of extensions. And we also have a Markdown Slides application where you can write slide decks in Markdown. I know this is a slightly niche feature, but I'm guessing this is probably the case where the niche is probably most active, where coders are used to like write slides in Markdown. I personally like it. Um, but these two apps are really underused, like hardly anyone knows about them uh, in, case of, uh, in the case of Cryptpad. Uh, so I think to do justice to them, we're going to try and merge them into a single app, and we're going to call this Notes, again, kind of going out on a limb here, but something that's not code or something that doesn't suggest that it's uh, only for editing kind of programs because that's not the case. Um, so yeah, we're imagining something at the moment with uh, basically a markdown editor with different modes. So if you want to do slides, you can just switch the mode in the, in the single app. Um, so beyond kind of uh, these different EU-funded projects and the partnerships we're setting up, uh, we've been thinking also about how to make our project uh, financially sustainable um, because we can't go on uh, research grants forever. And so basically, we've identified these three broad segments uh, in our user base, which are enterprise, nonprofits, and education. And right now, we're, we're um, trying to cater uh, to these three kind of broad use cases, uh, not necessarily trying to get everyone on cryptpad.fr, but uh, thinking more at the instance level. Uh, and encouraging and advertising the possibility for bigger entities such as universities, bigger NGOs, small and medium or large enterprise to have their own instance uh, of the product so that they could manage at their own domain, uh, sorry, or that they or we could manage for them, as in like uh, support contracts, etc. cetera. Um, that would be, you know, maybe slightly customized to their branding Etc. So we're exploring this as a potential uh, revenue source for for um, stabilizing the or like uh, you know uh, making the project financially viable, basically long term. So this is some pricing that we've just uh, launched on our uh, project site. So the self-hosting and the code remains free. Obviously, everything remains open source, uh, and then we have. Uh, the existing uh, way of subscribing to use Cryptpad is uh, kind of personal and organizational accounts on Cryptpad.fr. And now we're adding this managed instance um, possibility, which is still 
in very early stages, but uh, yeah, we're looking to uh, yeah, see where that goes basically in the year uh, ahead. So one thing before closing, I want to draw your attention to our new forum that was launched uh, last October. I uh, want to encourage you if you have feedback, feature requests, even bug requests and you don't use GitHub, uh, then please uh, come to our forum, um, um, submit, you know, uh, start a thread about something that uh, you care about uh, and we'll um, respond and hopefully maybe some other community members will, will, will respond. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to the team because obviously I'm not on my own. Uh, we started this this time last year, we were three people. Uh, and now we're six in the core team, so we've, we're, we're growing rapidly and, and a lot of things are, are happening and hopefully uh, very exciting things on the near horizon. Uh, this is it from me. I want to encourage you to go to quipad.org where you can find all relevant links to where to contact us, the new pricing I've mentioned, <coughs> and uh, everything else to get in touch or to read our documentation and try out uh, Quipad for yourself. Thank you very much, and I welcome your questions. So we have about eight minutes for questions. You have a question? I have a question. Yeah, you didn't talk about uh, uh, Open with Quipa, which is a, uh, an API. Yes. That could be interesting for developers. That would like yes, to yes. So, it. yes, one of, the, one of the things that we're... Oh, oh yes, sorry. So uh, I didn't talk about an API that we're developing, which is called Open with Quipad, although we're kind of reluctant to use this name because in some cases it could <coughs> imply that you're benefiting from the encryption when you would not be. But so yes, this is a, an API that we're developing at the moment that other host platforms could use basically Quipad application uh, just as an editor. Okay, so you have a file, a markdown file or a, a document stored in Nextcloud and you could open it uh, for a collaborative session in a Quipad um, encrypted collaborative session and then once it's saved, you uh, save back to Nextcloud or, you know, Nextcloud or any other kind of host platform with a Quipad instance, a lightweight Quipad instance running alongside it. Uh, why are we reluctant to use Open with Quipad for this? Or not reluctant, but we're thinking about what to call it, is that Quipad comes with a promise of uh, privacy, and in this case, we only control the privacy while the, the collaborative session is open. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's an issue, but yes, potentially some exciting developments in, in that front that would allow more people to integrate with us. Um, yeah? Yeah, a question about the concept of zero trust, because uh -huh. uh, zero trust end-to-end -end encryption based, based on that you can validate or verify that the client is really end-to-end -end encrypting your data, mm -hmm. uh, but as this is a web app, uh, is there any way to verify that the server delivers the code that is really end-to-end -end encrypting, or um, in the end do I have to trust the server that is really uh, delivering the code. So how can you be sure that the code that you're getting from the server is really uh, the right, I'm repeating your question for the, uh, the right um, code and that there is no kind of malicious uh, action on the server part, is that your question? Yes. So Theo's talk is called, uh, Whom Do You Trust? <laughs> in the, it was in the security dev room earlier, so he, he will have a lot more uh, detail on this. Uh, I think the short answer to it is that um, you can't really uh, be sure of it, uh, but there are ways that we are exploring in terms of verifying, for example, that the code on the server is matching a certain repository, but this is not um, implemented at the moment. So you have to trust that the, um, yes, that the server is, really delivering the same code that we publish on GitHub, for example. Uh, yeah. Run your own server. Yeah. That's, that's yes. The back, uh, maybe. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, so a lot of freedom fighters and activists are starting to use this. Uh, mm -hmm. Question one, is this advisable? Uh, question two is, um, if you allow me, uh, in the Netherlands, a lot of um, commercial encryption phones uh, 
survivors for criminals actually got uh, busted over the last two years. Mm -hmm. uh, these were for drug criminals and so on. Uh, people planning murders on that. Uh, are there any contingency plans for this? So to your first question, is it advisable for activists to use Cryptpad? I guess is your question. Uh, I would say yes. <laughs> uh, Theo reminded us earlier of the case of uh, Disha Ravi, who is an Indian uh, climate activist who basically got doxxed by Google to uh, New Delhi police, and that resulted in her arrest. So I think. Um, Yes, it's beneficial if you want to avoid uh, scenarios like this. Uh, and I think especially, um, so when you're involved in this kind of organizing, I think it's about protecting yourself, but also protecting whoever else you're dragging into your movement, right? So uh, we see a few, we've seen a few cases where um, you know, a document is shared quite widely, uh, and you, know, you see these uses of um, Google Docs where it's about sharing resources or even gathering resources, etc. So this is not just protecting yourself as an activist, but also all the people who are visiting your document. Right? So I think, um, yeah, there is, there is um, precedent here where you know, big tech companies are more than happy to out people. And I think as we see the tightening of the definition of like what's acceptable activism and especially around the climate movement, I think, uh, yes, I would advise for it. Uh, your second question was about encrypted phones and contingency plans for criminal uses of the software, basically. Um, so we administer Cripa.fr, which is the flagship instance, and I think uh, these plans are really at this level, at the instance admin level. And so I can only speak to what we do on Cripa.fr. And we're actively monitoring for you know, uh, criminal uses of uh, the, the platform. And whenever something is reported to us or whenever we find something, we're like, actively searching. Um, then we take down you know, anything we found. We find our experience is that um, at some point most of these endeavors end up you know having to recruit or having to basically you know uh, publish a link to something on the platform so that's when um, that's when these things become groups or whatever become visible and then we can act on them hope that answers your question we have one question at the back yes Um, can you please uh, tell us something more about the distribution in France uh, and how <coughs> it's uh, actually uh, welcomed by school and how it actually functions? So it's part of the, uh, the presentation. Yes. So what's the um, adoption of Cripad in response to... Uh, the, the recent recommendation not to use big tech platforms in education in France. Uh, so nothing as far as I'm aware. <laughs> we have, we're not aware of any um, schools using or having adopted <laughs> Cripad as a result of these recommendations. Uh, be aware we're talking like uh, this was two months ago or something or like it's fairly recent. Um, we see a lot of adoption in Germany, and this was even before um, these kind of recent developments. So we have a, a lot of testimonials from schools and universities that are using Cripad in, in Germany, and we seem to have a lot more traction on the German market than we do in France. So this is something that um, we're looking to improve on the French side. Uh, we're hoping to get, for example, there is a, a catalog of apps for the Education Nationale, which we're working to get um, onto that kind of um, suite that is deployable by schools. We're not there yet, but this is something that's um, on our radar. Yeah, 
Yes, Ludovic, if you have a contact with the we have, yeah. team, uh, they're interested, uh, they, need it, they need the old thing in particular, right. which is very important for that type of deployment. It's a bit complicated. Mm -hmm. It's not an auto deployment by schools, so it's not instances. It's basically a very, very big instances. Okay. They, have, uh, they have on their apps education uh, um, uh, another type of path, simpler one. Uh, there is somebody from National Education tomorrow uh, in another room. Uh, go see him and tell him that you want it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so time is up. We have one more last question. Okay. And, um, yes. Okay. Uh, you told us a quick, quick path is uh, encrypted from user to... Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So you have now a pass to the content of the user. Yes. And uh, it's safe, basically safe for activists to use it. And then you told us that uh, you monitor the flagship uh, instance yes. for lawful or unlawful usage. Illegal, yeah. Is there kind of a backdoor how you monitor the encrypted data for lawful or unlawful? Oh, no, so, sorry, sorry. Uh, so, uh, contradiction between um, I said that, we rec that I would recommend activists to use CryptPad and also that we were monitoring for criminal uses. What I mean, but what I mean by monitoring is, look, is uh, you know, OSINT or like scanning the internet for CryptPad links, not that we can monitor anything as administrators of the platform. Does that make sense? We search. So we don't see, uh, we don't see encrypted data, but if somebody if somebody sends us a link with the encryption key yeah. uh, because it was public, a link to a document, legal data, we we will delete it uh, potentially, and we would report it if we if we have to report it, and if uh, uh, and and if if we see that it's blatantly criminal, we would potentially even close the account and delete the data because we have some links between the data. We wouldn't be able to read the data because we cannot see the data, but we would delete it. Uh, and I'd like to add on this, we had one police request in the year, mm -hmm. and it was clearly illegal what they sent us. We sent them what, what we had, which was close to nothing, like uh, very little information, uh, only what we see in the past, basically. Uh, but So we're not seeing any data. Clearly, we're not seeing the data, but some people post links. Uh, That's why, for example, uh, the yeah. police, they see the computer, they will find a lot of links on the computer. What kind of links? Okay, so links to CRIPA documents. We can continue this if you want, but I think there was a misunderstanding with my use of actively so monitoring. Somebody can see or somebody can see that the link is... Uh, also, was, he mentioned it several times. It was public. Public. So uh, if, if something is posted on a... Oh, with the encryption key in the link. Yeah, you can share a link oh, okay. with it. Yes. <laughs> and... <laughs> That's all right. Thank you very much.